Hey guys, thank you so much for coming back to the channel. So I've been playing around with Claude, specifically some AI concepts, and I wanna make this video here specifically because I just need one video that is kind of short and concise that would kind of, is kind of something that I kind of needed in a way, I feel like, maybe a few weeks back when um, I just didn't, I wasn't in the exact same place as far as like AI and, and how I could use it was because I've been experimenting with things, I've been playing around with things, and I've been way deeper into building my own personal website, like rebuilding it, which I talked about on the live stream last week. I'll talk about it more moving forward on this channel, so make sure you're subscribed to see that. But I had a couple ideas, and those ideas using like bricks and ACSS and all this stuff, like it was just a little outside the scope of what the core software can do of those tools, right? And I just am having this full mental like reframing on what I can do with the AI tools that exist currently and probably into the future. And uh, I just kind of wanted to share that with you guys. So in this video, what we're going to talk about is just a couple of those examples and my thought processes on those. And then I'll link in the cards or down below the actual tutorials if you want to do some of these things. But the, the, if, you, if you click off of this video right now, the thing I want you to understand from my experience, is that Claude specifically, probably ChatGPT and everything else, I just like Claude's interface the best right now and, and the language models might different. If you're in WordPress or if you're if you're like, like close to the development area, these tools are like extremely powerful right now from what I can tell. I am not a developer by trade. I know HTML, CSS, Java, like a little bit of stuff like from just my experience in college and whatever. But the amount of things that you can just ask these AI tools to do now. It's like having a free or very cheap junior developer sitting next to you that knows probably way more than a junior developer, but I would say I'm reaching a little bit here, but maybe like kind of acts like a junior developer, so to speak, where they know what to do, but like they don't do every, they don't like take it the second step. I'll explain what I mean a little bit here and also in some other video, in those other videos. But the point is, if you have an idea and you're, your, your page builder, um, you know, if you're using like a Bricks, for instance, or even WordPress core, that's a whole separate topic that I want to get into at some point. If you have like a page builder or some sort of development environment that you can extend, you are like unbelievably, uh, you have unbelievable opportunity with a tool like Claude. You just tell it what to do, tell it the idea, potentially, and this is, I'll get into it here real quick, is potentially have to feed it some more of the documentation than it already knows, and then it will absolutely be able to create it. It's just, it's mind-numbing how fast it is and how little you actually have to know. I would still recommend that you know what's going on, but if you want to create more um, you know, features or you have ideas that your page builder cannot do, but your page builder allows you to extend, or again, Core allows you to extend, you could do it in no time with these with these AI tools now. Okay, and I'm and again I'm I'm talking about Claude, I'm talking about Bricks, but you can you can expand. Let me give you a quick overview of what the hell I'm talking about, and then in those subsequent videos I'll go in depth if you want to see the actual things. But here's what I had: I'm rebuilding my website, as I said. Okay, so I had at least two specific ideas that I couldn't really do, or I didn't know how to do, or I wanted to enhance. The first one, and we'll screen share here. The first one was I wanted to just have a, a page where I have a glossary as a CPT. I have um, basically the back up for a second. The idea is to have a glossary page or like a glossary archive, and each one of these these like block editor, container, custom block. Okay, there's not a lot of data in here. This isn't done, but like all of those are are individual posts, specifically a custom post type called glossary. Okay, and again, I'm trying to always teach you how to fish, so don't just like look at this in a one example. Use this to be a bigger thing. This was a simple idea. Okay, I just wanted to have all of these different like I wanted to. This is a query loop. So A, B, C, D, F, G, H, whatever, okay? The whole alphabet is query looped, and then in inside each one, it's like a nested query where you query all of the letters and then you query the the uh, the posts inside each one, regard, you know, according to which one. Now, in the video, I'll go into more depth, but the high level here is I wanted to do all that programmatically. It's probably not the best for many different reasons. What I decided to do was make a taxonomy. So there's a taxonomy that just has like number A, B, C, right? And we could see this all in the back end if we go back there. But it's a taxonomy with all of that, okay? And then there is a loop here that is, let's just go into Bricks really quick. And there's a loop here that's that's looping all of those terms, right? There's a section loop, so to speak, with all those terms. And then there's the entry loop, which is a nested loop in there. I don't want to go into deep, deep depth here. I just want to tell you the idea. 
The idea here was I wanted to do that one way where I could programmatically do it. I didn't end up doing that, I went taxonomy way. The thing is though, when I add all of these, I wanted one small little feature added and I didn't know how to do it, so I did it with AI. One small little thing was when I go in to, to add a new glossary item, okay? Uh, new entry is what I called it. When I go in here to do this, right? I wanna type in, um, I don't know, like search or something, okay? I don't want, the way that I did it, I'm just assigning taxonomies, but I don't wanna have to physically go over here and find the S and click it. So I'm not doing that. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in search and I'm gonna click enter and look what it automatically did for me. It automatically found programmatically via function that I that I created and I will show you in the other video, I'll link it in via Claude in like 10 minutes and a little bit of debugging, I was able to just quickly do that and it automatically finds the first letter of whatever is in here and it automatically goes over here and, and tags it at the appropriate thing. It even does something like this. If you change the letter, it even does it. So you, you have like the glossary, you have the taxonomy thing set up, but you don't have to actually mess with that at all. So again, I'm not going into exactly how I do that. I will show you the steps and everything like that in another video, but I wanna to explain to you in this overview video that I'm trying to keep as short as possible, that if you have an idea like that, it is way easier than you think to actually make that happen and manage that a little bit with like a quick either function that you put in your functions PHP or like a custom plugin, uh, which is apparently way easier than I thought it was. So that's the first thing, okay? That's, that's idea number one. Second idea is a little more complex than that, a little more, a little more intricate and I'll make a separate standalone video for that as well. But it was, I wanted to, it's actually a two-parter, but but we'll, we'll, they're, they're both revolving around the YouTube API, okay? So I make a lot of YouTube videos, hence where you're watching this right now probably. And I wanted to create a situation where on like my homepage or somewhere, uh, I wanted to say, when I am live, because I go live every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern, you should be there, when I go live, I want, like if somebody comes to my channel for some reason, like when, or my, my website rather, when I'm live, I wanna just say that I'm live. Like I wanna have like, you know, kind of how YouTube shows like on your channel that you're live. So I wanted to have like a, uh, really I wanted to have a section or something like that, right? So the high level here is that I went to Claude and I said the same thing. And all, and I said, I said like, hey, I wanna do this. I'm using Bricks, I'm using WordPress. Like I got the YouTube API, so it told me to set up a YouTube API, which is pretty straightforward. You get an API key, boom. And then you and then you go to work. So you basically, I'm just having conversation with Claude. And the first thing that it, that it ended up doing was something like this, which is just randomly in the middle of this page right now. But it was a short code that it uh, that it gave that it ended up giving me based on the, the the relatively shitty prompt that I gave it. And ultimately, it came out with "We are currently live on YouTube" or "We are not currently live on YouTube." But that was based upon. What I put in the YouTube API key to this code that they gave me, and I put in the um, channel ID that that I that I had, so to speak, into that, right? And then it checks, it uses the API to check that channel ID, and then if it's live, it says we're live, and if it's not, it says we're not. Okay, so that was the first thing that it did, and and I and this is like kind of you start to get into software developer idea where it's like that was kind of the minimum viable product, and then how do we expand that? I'll touch on that in a second. But if we come over here, we'll talk about this section in a second, right? But this is what it gave me ultimately. What, what it basically output after I put this in the functions PHP, and again, you're probably wondering what is all that code was, everything. I will release these videos all at the same time. Go look at the, the card or down below. I will show you the full thing if you want to understand. I'm trying to give you the high level. Right here is basically what that thing gave me. It created a custom short code. It gave me the code for a custom short code. And then I was able to put this custom short code into my, into my website just in a random spot. And then it says, it, it dynamically says, we are currently live or are we not currently live? Based on everything that I just mentioned there, if that channel is live or if it is not. And you could test it with a different channel, whatever, but that's the point, okay? So that was thing number one. And I was like, that is awesome. To me, that's awesome because I'm, that's now like breaking outside of just dynamic content on my website and in my system here, we're, we're dealing with APIs. I wanna do more of that stuff, that's awesome. So that was cool, but however, that's not really what I want. I don't just want like a little short code thing here that's really like difficult to style or whatever, like difficult to manage, like doesn't really do anything. I wanted something different. So the next thing, and I'll have a video on this, is I wanted a condition. Like, like you know how like when you go to, you know, anywhere in Bricks or any other page builder and you can come up here and there's somewhere there's conditions, dynamic conditions, right? Like show this if, you know, something equals something or doesn't equal or is or not or whatever, okay? So I wanted that. 
and I and I was like, I just said that to Claude. Like, I'm talking two sentences here, guys. I just said like, hey, I want to do this. How do I do it? And then immediately it comes back with, all right, we can do that. Now, I do want to put a caveat here, and I'll mention it deeper in the other videos as I go through it. But if you're using an AI tool, this is why I go back to the other thing about it being like a junior developer, which I'm not trying to shit on junior developers. I don't actually know if they're like this. But like, what I mean is you have to kind of like, you have to guide it. You have to guide it. If you don't guide it, you have. To, this is why you can't. This is why you can't just like type in some random stuff and get exactly what you want. You have to guide it with the prompting. You're probably going to have to prompt it a few times to get it to where you want it, because when you say, as an example, like I want a dynamic condition in bricks, it's not going to know exactly what you want. A lot of times, it doesn't seem like it reads the exact documentation. Maybe it doesn't have access to it, but it kind of guesses. And then you're not going to get exa- you're not going to get something that works precisely. So you need to be thinking. You still need to be thinking. You're just not doing as much of the the actual work. So it's a really important thing. Anyway, long story short, with this, is I wanted a condition where I could create like a section, like a beautiful. Like obviously, this is not. not this is just testing, but like a beautiful section that's like, hey, if you're seeing this section right now, we're live, blah blah blah, whatever, and. And I wanted to create that. And I wanted to create it in a way where it was easy in Bricks specifically or another page builder to like have a, a dynamic condition. Luckily, Bricks has a lot of ways to extend it, like a little element conditions API, right? So you find this, and instead of me trying to decipher this as a non-developer, right, this documentation here, I popped all of this. I, I didn't at first, but what you should do is if you find what you need, but you don't wanna deal with like changing out things and stuff like that, copy this, okay? Just copy, I try to do the link sometimes and it doesn't always get get the whole thing. So the best thing to do in my opinion, literally, I just went like this. I copied all this documentation, I, I pasted that into Claude. We'll go over in the other video. I'm, again, I'm straying from the high level, but I wanna give you uh, enough of a teaser here to go watch his other videos and see if you wanna do this is I dropped all that into Claude, I got it, I got everything that I needed, and it actually created a custom plugin, which is just a PHP script that I zip up and then I and then I upload as a custom plugin on the website. I thought that was gonna be way harder, it wasn't. And then boom. So now what I have is after some trial and error, I have a section. This is a regular section that you're seeing down here. If you're seeing this, I'm live right now, watching it, whatever. That's a regular section. But when I click the section conditions, and I come up here, now I have a whole new section of conditions. This is totally custom. You're not gonna find this YouTube section on anybody else's Bricks uh, you know, install because this is custom added and extended via their element conditions API. And it's something I built with Claude. And then you have a YouTube section, you have channel live status. And then when you click channel live status, you can again, continue to edit this if you want, make it your own, but it's is or is not, and then live. And it's just like, if it's live, then you're gonna see it. If it's not, then you can you can set up the condition however you want. And I'm just testing here because I'm not actually live currently. But the point is that you set this condition up to however you want, and then if it's live, you see it. If it's not, you don't. So I'll go over this in the other video. But my point is here, okay, I wanted to keep this as short as possible. Hopefully it was decent. Is the, the thesis of all this, okay, is regardless of if you had those ideas or any other guys, if you have those ideas, watch the other videos and you can kind of get m- more of a technical way of how I actually did all those things. But the point is here, a quick illustration of all the things that you that you can do that I'm learning and, and maybe you guys already knew of the power of these tools, not from a gonna take your job type of situation right now, you know, nobody knows the future, but it's not like that. It's like, it is incredibly enhancing the, the, the work that I can do because that's a little outside my skill set, but I still have the ideas. And I'm still like, you like, I can think critically enough to go find like the little documentation and stuff like that that I need. And then I can feed that into the thing. I just think of these AI tools more as, again, like assistance rather than, um, you know, like, I don't know, like uh, replacements, so to speak. At least now, we have no idea what's gonna happen in the future. But all I'm saying is, as we're here now, if you have that opportunity, maybe go take a look at it, think of some ideas, see if it can do it, see whatever you can throw at it, and just um, just realize that you're gonna have to like prompt it a little bit and guide it sometimes, but the, the result is fantastic in my opinion. I, I'm, I'm excited with that, that did exactly what I wanna do. I have a lot more ideas that, uh, that we're gonna be playing with. But yeah, so hopefully this was helpful. I wanted to keep it short, still 15 minutes, sorry about that. But um, yeah, links everywhere for the other videos. Go check them out if you're interested in them. And let me know what you want to see. If you have other ideas, uh, you know, on AI stuff or just web design stuff in general, we're doing more content here. You know, you know what it is. So, and also live every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern because I definitely always do that. I'm on a huge streak right now. So, I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you so much. Hopefully, you got something out of this video. We'll see you in the next one.